Good evening, everyone. I am Sky Gavin of WhenInManila.com, and we are live here on Facebook on the WhenInManila.com and Massage MNL Facebook page. Today's episode is brought to you by NurseryFan.com, Smart Steps, Laurel Coats, Miles, Club X, Chihuahua Cosmetics, and Cradle. Of course, MNL Talks wouldn't be complete without a giveaway from our dear sponsors. So please don't forget to follow them on Instagram, and their Instagram handles are flashed on your screen. It takes a village to raise a child, and it's this group as moms who want to attend to all the needs of our child. But we can do it alone. The people around us help us survive motherhood, and this may be with our partner, husband, mother, sibling, friends, or helpers, or it can also include our pediatricians or teachers. But what are the difference of each parenting style? Does age change the way we raise our children? We will have a fun discussion about motherhood then and now with our special guests for today. First is TV host, entrepreneur, and of course, fellow mama, Trisha Centenera. Hi, Trisha! Hi! Oh, yeah. Hi, sorry, I was on mute. Hi, how are you, Sky? I'm okay. I hope you're, you're doing good. well. We're good. We're and good. of course, oh, we have Trisha's very good friend as well, um, host, entrepreneur, and of course, Mama as well, Patty Grande Herrera. Hi, Patty. Ladies, good evening. Hey, Trish. Hey, Hello. Sky. I'm so happy to have you guys here today. Um, because I'm very curious, since you guys are friends, um, do you guys share parenting tips or do you guys have similar parenting styles? Every day, every day. <laughs> um, actually, me and born, Trisha, right? we, we both have two kids. She has two daughters. I have two sons. And they're like, I mean, our firstborns are like three months apart. And then our most recent babies are like two weeks apart. So we're really on this very parallel journey, which is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, we do. We share, we're in a couple of group chats together and then we share a lot privately as well. So yeah. And we ask for advice too. It's tips, it's advice, it's just in sharing. Sometimes we just want to share what's going on and it's it's so vital, I think, to have a mama tribe, and I'm so lucky that Trish is part of mine. Yay! Yes, for sure. So, what are you? What are your parenting styles? Do you guys uh, practice a certain th- certain kind of parenting for your children? It's funny because we um, even have the same pedia, and um, yes. <laughs> and our PD is always saying I was at the PD yesterday Zuri was having her ears pierced and she was having uh, another shot and I was getting a bit anxious while it was happening and he turns to me and he goes my gosh but you're not Patty what's happened to you too usually you're cool and you're calm and usually Patty's the more you know um I wouldn't say high strung or stress I would just say you're a little uptight emotional and affected by things than what I am um, so yeah, I feel like that's kind of the difference between us. But then obviously as of yesterday, the shoe can be put on both feet at the same time. Like sometimes I'm really chill and, and Patty's not. And then sometimes Patty's really chill and I'm not, but more than none, I'm the chill one. <laughs> Patty's not. <laughs> <laughs> I think most mo- most moms nowadays, especially during the pandemic, we're more anxious about everything. <laughs> we're, more, we're more nervous about everything that's happening, especially if it involves like going out, going to your pediatrician or something like that, right? Yeah, but I will say like generally, what did you ask our parenting styles? I do yeah. feel like, you know, Trisha, we're obviously always usually on the same, almost always like on the yeah. same page. Like when Neo was a newborn, I took a workshop, um, a RI workshop, which stands for Resources for Infant Educaring. And like we packed so much into like a weekend. I can't cover that in right now. But, you know, it really just comes down to like respect, trust and connection. And I know that's like, you know, a foundation that Trisha and I super share. Um, And the goal is really just to just build a healthy relationship with our children where both needs are met theirs and ours you know both both is important and we're always evolving i would say as our kids grow and as their um needs change so 
it's it's like truly a journey and this is just the beginning it's really just yeah. um, to put it simple it's just respectful parenting that's yeah. what it is you know not talking yeah. at them talking with them um, you know, validating their their emotions, if it's a big emotion, if it's a small emotion, you know, telling them that we believe in them, all that kind of stuff. Instead yeah. of just so, instead of just telling them what to do, which is the then, not the now. Yes, I, exactly. I was gonna I was gonna say that. So um did your parenting style change um, because of your parents or how were you and your siblings um, was brought up by your parents? Did it affect how you wanted to be as a parent now? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I have a, Trisha comes from a bigger family than me and me, it's just me and my younger brother. And we're, we're the same age gap actually as my two sons now, which obviously wasn't planned, <laughs> but yeah. So um, I don't know. I mean, my mom was a flight attendant when I was born and then two years later she had my brother oops um she had my brother and then she stopped working so i would say she was very like present in our lives which you know is something that i want to be for both my kids my dad was obviously working providing for the family but he really gave us like the best memories both my parents like just fun family vacations um you know stuff like disneyland so i don't know i feel grateful to have had like a pretty pretty solid childhood <laughs> Yeah, same, same. I'm the same. Um, my mom, there was, I was, I'm one of six kids and my mom was a stay at home mom as well. And my dad, same thing, same, very similar to Patty's upbringing. You know, we didn't go to Disneyland, um, but we would go snow skiing every year. Um, and just things like that, you know, wherever you kind of pile the kids into the car and drive them to was where we were in Australia. Uh, Cause I was born and raised in Australia. But, um, wait, what was your question again? Um, Just about our childhood. Yeah, so yeah, very, <laughs> very, very solid childhood. And Patty and yeah. I, we actually com comment and, and compliment each other all the time. She's really close with her dad. I'm really close with my dad. She's really close with her mom. I'm really close with my mom. They're such big parts of our life still, no matter what country they're in. There's yeah. modern technology keeps us just as close as if they were just next door. So I think that's where Patty and I, our friendship is quite, you know, our foundations are quite strong there because we've had very similar upbringings as well. And we're so fortunate. We talk about yeah. that a lot too, that, you know, um, our parents kind of gave us that foundation. What do they say? Like one to five, those years are very impressionable. Years, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so well done to our parents, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Is there something specific that your parents did while you were growing up that you want to practice for your kids as well? I think for me, it's more so just being strict about family time, you know? Like it's still very, my father's still very firm about coming home for Christmas. We all are very respectful and courteous to each other. We always all call for birthdays and you know we have a, a sibling chat so those kind of things my parents my dad wasn't the strict one but when it came to spending time with the family for vacation you know annual vacations he really it was his non his non-negotiable so we had to be no matter where in the world we are we have to go back to australia for christmas especially so there are those family bonding ties that i will definitely be uh, bringing forward with, with my family, that's for sure. Yeah, I have to say, pretty similar, pretty similar with me too. Like, um, I guess family is a big value, right? So, I mean, even now my kids, um, Neo especially, his bond with my parents and with his his grandma on John's side, like it's, it's so special to see and we just want to keep you know, that bond going. And then also with our immediate family, our family of four, just to kind of, you know, make, start our own traditions, start our own little, just family bonding moments. And that, that's all the kids really need. They need just us and our love yeah. and our presence. Present. Speaking of bonding, what do you guys do for family time? Eat. <laughs> We eat. Um, lots of things are, you know, spent around the table eating, cooking, baking, but also just being together, whether it's just like 
doing a walk together, having coffee together. Um, I think it's just about being together and, and present, you know, like no distractions and we're just genuinely interested in each other and, and what's going on. Yeah. I think it's just being present, right? I mean, we have, we have a very routine day, especially with the pandemic now. <laughs> we have to be in a routine. But even before that, we, we did have a very similar routine. But, of course, Dwayne, my partner, would, would get up and go to work from, you know, 9 o'clock in the morning he'd be at work and he'd come back at 7. But now it's all he'll jump on his Zoom call at 9.30 and then we won't see him come out of the home office until lunchtime and then et cetera. So we have our, our family bonding time is in the morning. We get to – because we – get up maybe about 6 30 so that's a good two and a half hours where we have where we can all sit together we can read the news we play there's no gadgets in the morning it's just uh coffee and and breakfast so yeah kind of like patty eating and bonding and and kitty kitty music <laughs> yeah a lot of kitty music and and yeah and that, you know you just kind of have a round so if ever arabella's building something and Dwayne is there, or if I'm there, we can kind of jump in at a second's notice. And yeah, just kind of being there, being present. You know, there's a very big difference between being a parent who is there and being a present who is present and there at the same time. It's very, very, very different. Physically, physically there is different than, you know, being presently yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Yes, because I think most parents are having a hard time now since we are all staying at home. We're spending our time 24-7 with our kids. Sometimes, sometimes they feel like they need some me time. <laughs> and they're okay. having a hard time really connecting with um, with their kids now because, you know, they're distracted with working from home or they're teaching their kids and doing all these things. So it's really important that you guys said that um, being present and, and not just being there for your kids. So I think that was super insightful and um, or I think our parents really helped a lot in raising our own children. And from the way we are raised, we got an idea on how we want to be as parents. And of course, more than the knowledge that we get from our guests today, we are also sharing um, to our audience today some amazing prizes from our dear sponsors that are flashed on your screen. That's nurseryband.com, Smart Steps, Laurel Co., Smiles, COVEX, Chihuahua Cosmetics, and Cradle. So don't forget to follow them on their social media pages flashed on your screen. So for giveaway number one, of course, we promised the giveaway earlier. And of course, we will be asking three questions throughout this live session and we will get three winners. So please don't forget to follow our sponsors for today in order to join the giveaway. So the first question is, this is very easy. Who are the sponsors for this episode? It's super easy because we just flashed all the names of our sponsors earlier. And of course, we are leaving clues all throughout these live sessions. Just comment your answer and we will be announcing the winner later. And we will have a total of three questions. And that's one winner per round. Okay. Thank you for our dear sponsors for giving up us uh, the prizes for today. And now back to Patty and Trisha. What practices did you guys pick up from your parents before when you were growing up and that you are now practicing as a mother yourself? I think a lot of the stuff is honestly like subconscious. Like we don't even realize we're doing the things that um, our parents did. And cause you know, we were programmed that way. So you know, and those are good things. And there's, those are like maybe negative things, you know? So I feel like if it's up to us and if we want to change those things, um, it just requires a lot of self-awareness. Sometimes we don't even realize that we're saying the exact same things that our parents used to say to us. Yeah, I agree. I agree. My mom gave a lot of tough love uh, when we were growing up and I feel that I do the same, but in a, you know, more uh, like your own version of it. <laughs> yeah, you know, because my mom had six kids, so giving us tough love had to happen really quickly. Where I, because Arabella is my first, I have more time to give to her to give her the tough love, so I can and and I can use more words to explain. 
So I feel like back in the day when my when my parents were parenting, they were just always so time starved. There was no time. The kids just had to get to school and get to the bath and get into bed and do their homework. And and because in Australia, there's no nannies, there's no yayas, there's no you know all of that kind of stuff. So it was very kind of like, you know, we were, we were kind of ruled with an iron fist. <laughs> You know, there was that kind of fear of my mother and, I mean, not of my dad, but um, but of my mom, but not in a, oh, my God, I'm so scared of her, in more like a, oh, if I don't get into the bath now, mom's going to be, mom's going to be upset, I'm going to get into the bath, do you know what I mean? Where with Arabella, I still have that, but I'm able to do it in a, in a, just in a different way and with more time so I can use more words to kind of explain why, where before it was just don't, don't. Don't ask why. Don't ask me questions. Just do it. Yeah, I mean, no, six no. kids is, is no joke. That's like no, yeah. a lot of kids. <laughs> Maybe before it was more authority. Um, you know, that's what you were kind of explaining, right, Trish? Like the yeah. fear and, yeah. you know, because they were – you know, maybe they were the like authority figures, whereas, you know, maybe now me and Trish are trying to sort of meet them where they are, meet them, you know, their brains, they're just developing, you know, mm -hmm. these, these kids, they can't even really regulate. If we think, you know, as adults, we can't self-regulate. What about two-year-olds and three-year-olds? So it's kind of reasonable expectations and they'll only deliver what, what they can. And it's up to us to kind of be understanding about that i feel like it's more of a negotiation now where i could never have negotiated with my mother when i was younger because it just as i said there was no time to negotiate it, i just had to kind of follow suit as to what my other and i'm the second youngest i had to follow suit to what my brothers and sisters were doing when now i give arabella space and and the time to if she wants to negotiate if she doesn't want to do something then i'm asking her okay explain to me why you don't want to do it and and we'll kind of go from there just so that i validate her feelings and respect her at the same time i love it um is there a huge difference between your parenting style and or from each other me and trish yes mm, not really no, we, it's pretty that's what i was trying to say before yeah. like our personalities yeah they're a little different <laughs> but it, like the foundation and where we both kind of have the same approach i think it's really similar because it's yeah. we talk about it almost every day yeah with all the access now readily available for your kids what are the things that you wish you had before that your kids have now i think it was more simple before it seems a little a little crazy now with phones and social media and devices. We didn't have any of that stuff when we were younger. But I also do. But I I wish that our kids didn't have all of that now. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like so it's kind of like yeah. you know what we wish that we had now that we didn't have back then. Yeah, what we no. wish for our kids. <laughs> yeah, for our kids. Oh, wow. I wish for yeah. Them. You know, more, more, um, just less gadgets for me. It's always, that's always, it, it's always such a, a talking point. You know, we're back in the day. I don't remember asking my parents if I could watch on their phone to, my parents didn't even have phones back then. I remember, I remember when mobile phones came out and it was that big brick. Yep. It's definitely not I don't even on that. <laughs> Yeah, right. And I don't even remember like looking at my parents and them being on a phone. Never. You know, that just wasn't a thing back then. Yeah. Um, whereas now you really have to be mindful of yeah. of, you know, what you're doing in front of your kids and whether you you choose to use the phone or not. But I will say I think Trish, we are pretty mindful, you know, we plan play dates, we plan socializing where the kids they're outside for the most part. That's what we yeah. try to do. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's def of course, there's no phones there. We want them to learn from each other. It's the peer to peer interaction, which is so important, um, which has been challenging during the pandemic. But, you know, the moms will find a way. <laughs> and it, it's really it's important. I mean, the, these times are are important for our kids. So they as, as much as they love the adults in their lives, their parents, their grandparents, they need they need to see people their own age. Yes. So do you guys allow your kids to watch um, 
Netflix or their favorite cartoons on their phones or on TVs? Or how long can they watch something on their gadgets? I don't like the, the mobile phones because I don't like the scrolling. I would rather, if she wants to watch something, we'll put it on the TV so I have control of, okay, that's one episode of Paw Patrol, we're done. But it's not, we don't do morning TV. If anything, it's kind of around about, I wouldn't say afternoon, I'd say kind of like that that lull part in between, it's not dinner time, but it's not time to go, we can't go outside anymore, where everyone's kind of cooking, where we can, you know, give them one episode of whatever, Bluey, Paw Patrol, whatever it is, that, what they want. Um, and then that's it. But I just think when it comes to gadgets, like anything in life, everything in moderation. And that's it. That's yeah. the key to everything. It's the key to being, you know, healthy on the inside and outside. It's the, it's the key to having balanced children. You can't starve your children of chocolate and ice cream and then expect them not to go out and be at a party and be like, oh, do you know what I mean? So I think that with gadgets I think and screen time, I think that it's the same thing for me anyway. Um, yeah, and that is always in a, a negotiation with Arabella. I don't just tell her, no, you can't because you just can't. But, you know, especially if she's kind of been playing the whole day and she can earn it as well. So I don't want to say no to her all the time, um, but I need her to learn no for when it counts. So I definitely pick my battles when it comes to screen time with her. How yeah, I, I agree. Like, look, I was pregnant when Neo turned two. Yeah, I, oh gosh, this seems like it was like last year. And so up till then, we actually didn't do screen time, which now I just can't believe. But anyways, we didn't just FaceTime. And then I was pregnant. First trimester was really, you know, rough, just super tired, lethargic. And I was like, hey, we're going to do screen time. Like mommy needs a break and I'm not trying to be super mom. I'm not trying to, like Trisha said, just ban it forever. Um, mm -hmm. You have to do what you do, what you have to do. Right. And especially for, you know, both parents to be emotionally healthy. Like why am I going to just tire myself out during my first trimester just so that my child can't watch TV for, you know, I need a 30, 45 minute break. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it's, you you just have to do what you have to do. And like Trish said, everything in moderation. Yeah. Um, and I think that way, you know, they don't want it as bad. It's not like, like the chocolate example. Like if you treat it as, you know, this little thing that you're dangling, the more they're going to want it. So it's like, okay, screen time's not, not a big deal. You yeah. know, like, sure, you can watch it for 30 minutes. And, and sometimes he'll actually be done after 20 minutes. And I'm like, oh, great. You know, I'm like, oh man, I need that extra 10 minutes. <laughs> like, why don't you want to watch it? But you know what I mean? So it's like, I mean, this is part of life that the digital stuff is going to be here. So let's kind of work with them and making it like a positive experience. I do feel like with something what Patty just said is something that we both did was I'm a firm believer that children don't need screen time and entertainment when it comes to cartoons and that until they are two, before two years old they just don't need it they're yeah. so new to the world there are so many things that they can look at and and experience because everything's brand new so when it came to screen time before arabella was two it would be because she'd go to her cousin's house and they would you know have something on and she'd be like oh okay and then and or I traveled to Australia just before her second birthday. So, of course, because I was so pregnant and I was traveling with her, I needed to have it as my last, you know, resource, like my last um, option if she was going to, like, lose her mind. But apart from that, I mean, the first two years, I really don't think they need it. And now it's really hence why now when we say, okay, you want to watch one? Okay, great. Watch one. But after the one, please turn it off. I've never had to fight with her to get her off it. I've never had to negotiate her getting off it because she knows that if she does ask for it genuinely um, and nicely and with manners, she'll get it. But she knows that she. But she also knows that it's not something that I'll give her all the time. So again, it's just about respecting, introducing it at the right time, and and talking to them about it. 
But I also feel like that if you're not playing with your children or giving them other activities, that's when they can kind of fall into that little, you know, gadget black hole. Yes. Because so. I think many, many parents are really trying to um, balance giving screen time to their children or, you know, because especially now that we are just at home and they're running out of things to do. So I think that's always their um, solution to for their kids to have something to do. So I think that's a very um, good answer and tip for other parents that are watching us tonight. And of course, I think um, one, one thing that I also wish for is, of course, to win from our brand partners. Okay, so um, this is giveaway number two. Okay. How many kids do our guests how? How many kids does Trisha and how many kids does Pat have? Just comment your answer and we will announce the winners at the end of the show. Okay, let me just look at the answer. Wow, okay. Very good, guys. Very... Um, are, they guessing, are they guessing right? My goodness. We're guessing right. <laughs> And our um, audience, actually, every episode, they're looking forward to our giveaways because we always have three winners per episode just so more people are happy and more people can get the um, prizes from our sponsors, okay? Some of our audience are sharing advices that they got from our parents. So for you, um, Trisha and Patty, what are the greatest advice that you ever got from your parents or your in-laws? Um, I think with what, when it comes to me, because I have two girls, the advice that my mom gave to me that is always in my mind when it comes to Arabella is a lot of people will be like, oh, you know, your daughter's so pretty. Or they'll say to her, oh, you're so pretty, et cetera. And I'm always saying, yes, you're pretty on the inside. You know, prettiness starts from the inside, you know, um, because I don't want her to just think, oh, you know, everyone thinks that I'm pretty, blah, 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 blah. I was never told when I was younger that I was pretty, ever. My mother, I mean, from my from my aunties and uncles, yes, but my mother kind of kept it. At, and Patty knows this as well. Um, my parents kind of kept it because there's five girls in my family, five girls, one boy. And the last thing that they wanted were all us five girls to be like, can you give us some water or, or do you know what I mean? Use our looks to get somewhere in life because it's not about that, you know, to get somewhere in life. It's hard work. It's grit. You know, you use your brains and, and, if you're pleasant looking, well, then that is just a bonus, but you never use it as a means to get something or to get somewhere. So I've definitely noticed with Arabella, I don't uh, expound or comment too much on her appearance. And if she does say, you know, mama, so-and-so said that I'm pretty, I say, yes, you're very pretty on the inside. You're beautiful on the inside. And then I'll say, and on the outside, but pretty and beauty starts from the inside so she so that's how she kind of will wire herself into and I've actually spoken to my nannies as well I'm I say to them you know watch how you um format sentences and things like that I've had to print things out and stick it onto the fridge just to make sure so that when it comes to my mom I wouldn't say that's advice but that's how she raised us and that's definitely something that I do with Arabella. Okay. Yeah, I just How thought of um, what you're explaining, Trish. I just like probably a quote I saw on Instagram, but it's like how we speak to our kids that becomes their inner voice. So, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm the same with, with Neo. If it's like, again, people say, oh, you're, he's so cute. He's so pokey. He's so guapo. I'm like, yeah, but he's so kind. Yeah. And he's, he's so sweet. Um, and, and he really is. I mean, our kids, I love our kids. <laughs> I mean, like we could gush about our kids and talk about them and not even talk about their looks. You know what I mean? It's, it's about their personalities. Oh, and he's so curious. Oh, he's so, he's a little cautious. He's, um, you know, he's so sweet. He's so kind. He's so mm -hmm. thoughtful, things like that. Um, and it really like, 
like what Trish was saying, that's, that's what we want, you know, their inner, inner voice to be. I'm, I'm brave. I'm confident. Um, and you know, that's what we want to arm them with. So mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. I, just, I, I actually just realized this now that um, that's also the way I talk about my daughter. When people say that she's cute, I always tell them she's actually very silly or she's very funny. Yeah, yeah so, she's, she's hilarious. Yeah. yeah, so hopefully, and they are picking up on those things. I mean, we, they're, they're sponges. They, they're picking up everything. So of course they'll, they'll hear people say they're beautiful. They're, they're pogi, they're guapo, they're handsome. But you know, if that's all they're going to say, it's kind of like our responsibility as parents yeah. to kind of just, why don't Brand we just add them. on <laughs> so, so that they can get more, you know, more absorb mm -hmm. more about about themselves and have um, that self-worth and confidence. Yeah. I also know that my sister, my sister has a four-year-old daughter and she kind of, without us even really talking about it, has done the same thing with her. And she said that her daughter, Noah, she never gets dressed, makeup and that in front of her because she doesn't want her to be obsessed with her looks. And her daughter is gorgeous, like the cutest little thing ever, but she doesn't want her to be all obsessed with putting makeup on and, and things like that. Um, Arabella will sit with me and, and do makeup. So I'll definitely navigate my way around that one a little bit differently. Um, but yeah, so it's interesting that my sister picked up the same thing from when we were growing up. She was like, I just don't want her looks to be the first foot forward, which is how mom was with us. And I was like, yeah, I, I'm kind of the same with Arabella. That's, you know, yeah, anyway. So uh, yeah. uh, my, my question now is, is it more stressful or um, is there more pressure on you guys? You guys are always in the limelight. Like you guys, uh, many people are following you. Is, it, is, motherhood more, um, is motherhood harder on you guys or do you get pressured most of the time because people are following you and what you do with your kids? No, I don't think so. Yeah, I'm like, uh, no, everyone's a parent, no matter who you are, <laughs> um, how many followers you have. And it's really what we choose to share, really. Like, if we're open enough to share about, you know, certain parenting approaches, tips and tricks and hacks, like, it's only because we want to relate with other parents, you know, yeah. we don't want, there's no sort of pressure or you know, luckily, no, not too many haters. Because um, if you're a mom, you know that it's one of the toughest jobs in the world. So why, you know, put that on another another parent? Um, definitely, definitely no pressure. If ever we just we just all want to support each other. I feel like yeah. we're so big on supporting one another because it ain't easy. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. No, I don't feel that um there's any pressure if anything the pressure's from ourselves to be the best mm. parents that we can be and that's where your mommy tribe comes in and patty's such a big part of that where we can turn to each other and we can we can pour out our insecurities onto each other and we know that it's a safe space because you know at the end of the day we are just navigating through this just like everybody else so and we also i think because Patty and I, you know, have both been hosts and et cetera. We both know that not everyone has to like you. Not everyone's going to like you. It's the same with our parenting techniques. Yeah. Not everyone's going to agree with how we raise our children, but we hope that they respect that that's our choice as yeah. we respect them and their choices. I'm sure some people are like, oh, that wonky respecting parenting thing that they're doing <laughs> um but you know it, it works for us and but i think what what trisha said it's it's more the pressure really from within or you know the mom guilt and that's that's tough because that's like that's not even an audience that's yourself so mm -hmm. and that comes at like 3 a.m 1 a.m no one's watching that's, that time. that's that's where the pressure comes from. And I was going to say something else, Trish, when you were talking, but now I completely forget mom brain. Um, I, I completely forget. Sorry, guys. Speaking of mom brain, this is just a curious question. When you had kids, did um, your memory got bad? No, it's like a thing. It's real. 
<laughs> mom brain is real. I like, I tell my husband, I'm not making this up. <laughs> yes, Something then, happens. I think, uh, guys, I don't, I don't think guys understand that when we say we have mom brain, they think it's just something that we made up. Because um, I have a two-year-old. I only have one kid. So when I was explaining to people, when I forget things, I always say mom brain. And, and they're like, you just forgot. <laughs> Yeah, that just happened to me. It just happened to me. But it, it's real. Something happens like with the chemicals in our brain that if you're a mom, you'll get it, right? I mean, yeah, yeah I, I totally believe you, Sky. I mean, I get it. <laughs> and also the fourth trimester. I've tried to explain the fourth trimester to my partner and he's just like, what do you mean? Why are you crying when you're watching, you know, TV late at night and, and, just, you know, the hormones are so out of control for at least like a year afterwards and trying to explain about the fourth trimester to my partner or to any guy. It's just, they're just like, we like just got out of it. Yeah. Trish, we just got out of it. Like, you know what I mean? Like that mm -hmm. foggy, the hazy, the newborn period, which is the fourth trimester. We're like me and Trish are just now seeing the light. So mm -hmm. hello. Okay. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Actually, many of many moms that we talk to, they share that their fourth trimester is actually harder than the first three trimesters. I'm there. I agree with that. What what are, what were your experiences on your fourth trimester that was memorable or funny or something? No, I think it's just the adjustment period. You know, like especially now for me and Trish with we have toddlers and then we have newborns. So it's, you know, there's a new member of the family. So how, how do they fit in? How does the toddler see this new sibling? It's so new. It's, there's so much, our bodies are recovering. Um, you were trying to rest. We're trying to literally keep another human alive <laughs> with um, by nursing and with our breast milk and everything, breastfeeding. So there's just so much going on. Um, trying to be, you know, good partners to our partners. There's there's a lot. Um, and I think it, that being it takes easier than the fourth trimester, much easier with them in. Is it easier in. <laughs> than when they're out. <laughs> Did you yeah. guys have a hard time um, latching, bottle feeding, or um, be, uh, weaning your kids when you got your newborn? Well, Patty, Patty breastfeeds much for much longer than what I do. I, Arabella, Arabella, what's my second kid's name? <laughs> Zuri <laughs> is five months old, and we just stopped because it gets to a point where my, I mean, my milk. I had my vaccine and my milk kind of dwindled a bit and I got it back up again. But then I went back to work and then I had my second vaccine and my milk dwindled again. And, you know, I'm pumping and I'm pumping and, and it just got to the point where I was like, okay, I wanted to breastfeed for six months, but I have enough milk stored to do the next couple of weeks. So I stopped direct latching at five months where Patty goes for like three times as long. Like Nia, Nia was like yeah, a year Nia was and a half. 20 he was like 20 months. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, wow. Yeah. And I, so, but I was lucky um, at the time. I, I didn't really know what was going on, but my son, he self weaned. He was the one who stopped feeding and I was the one who was not ready for it. I was like, Oh wait, what's happening? <laughs> like, you know, so, but now in hindsight, um, you know, I, when, when I did tell my mommy friends, the ones who had, you know, older kids, they were like, you know what, sometimes that's easier when they when they self wean rather than you having to gradually taper them off. Of course, yeah. at the time, I didn't understand. But now looking back, I realize, oh, he actually, um, you know, made it easy, easy for me in a way. So yeah. we'll see. We'll see how it goes with with my second son, Jed. But yeah, I'm I'm breastfeeding and I love it. And I'm, I'm blessed with a lot of milk. So it's yeah. just something that that I'll do until who knows when. Let's see. Until he doesn't want it anymore. I know. And now I'm thinking like, I hope he self weans too. So we don't have to like, you know, just do this whole weaning thing. So I don't yeah. I actually don't have experience in in the weaning. Yeah. No, I mean, and that's what Patty's and my journey is different because I with with Arabella as well, I was only able to direct um, 
feed her for three months, then my milk dropped. And then I actually had, which I don't think people know, I had a milk donor who I was pumping my milk and her milk. It was a good friend of mine. We were pregnant at the same time. She had just so much milk. And she lived lives literally just down the road. So she'd call me and be like, come and pick up your milk. So her daughter, who's the same age as Arabella, was feeding Arabella so that we got Arabella to together combined, we mix fed our breast milks to six months. So that's why I had said I want to breastfeed Zuri for six months as well. But come five months, my milk dwindled and instead of killing myself about it, I pat myself on the back and said, you know what, you did such a good job. You did such a good job. You know, don't stress out about this next month. You've got stored milk. Just do it. Get her over that finish line. And then, you know, we have a friend as well. I think she has three kids. One she did two years. One she did four months. The other one she did like a week because of other things. So it's just like every child is different. Every mother when it comes to breastfeeding and latching and weaning and some mothers have any nipples, some mothers have outy nipples, you know, it's, it's some mother's kids want to feed every hour and it's just exhausting for them. And then some kids like Patty's child just loves to sleep. And when I see pictures <laughs> of her son on Instagram sleeping, I'm like, Jed is like a sleeping koala bear. He's always and sleeping. Marie is just up all the time. So it's very kind of very different. But again, because of the strong mummy tribe that we have, like I remember when I told you the other day that I had finished breastfeeding, the first thing that Patty said was, wow, I'm so proud of you. You did so well because she knows last time I really kind of struggled with it. So exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's like, yeah, even what you were saying before, it's like that pressure maybe Trish was putting on herself to reach six it's months, perfect. like, yeah. you know, just reframe it and say wow i did five months like that's awesome yeah and and it truly is like you know me and trish had these zombie conversations at like 3 a.m 5 a.m and you know in the beginning when they're cluster feeding and they're growing and you know we're like what time did you get up what time did he get up and you know <laughs> it's something that we'll just we'll just remember it forever and we're just so happy that we were able to do that for the kids and yeah. and if you can't do it it's fine you know yeah. what I mean? It's totally fine. Yeah. Agree. No one said it's no not a joke. <laughs> it's not. It's no it's no joke at all whatsoever. So I think knowing when to give up because also as well with Arabella at three months, it was actually one of my other best friends, Rhea, who turned to me and said, You need to stop. You're stressing yourself out so much. You're about to hit that line of postpartum depression because you're stressing out about giving you know she was like, start mix feeding her. And I was just lucky that I could find a donor. I had no problem with mix feeding her with formula, but my other friend was like, I have so much milk. So we were able to do that. But knowing when to stop for your own mental health as well and patting yourself on the back for what you have achieved and not comparing yourself to your other friends who I able to breastfeed for much longer. So, I mean, yeah. Patty's not breastfeeding because Patty's breastfeeding and I'm not. I was able to go to a friend's birthday and get really drunk the other night. <laughs> yeah. See, some things are left on the back burner, okay? <laughs> Which is true, right? So um, it, just, it just depends on how you look at things. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I was just going to say, I feel like breastfeeding can be like a whole MNL talk. But because this is massage MNL, I feel like I just have to say this. Hi, Janine. I know you're listening to us. Um, the lactation massages mm -hmm. uh, from Massage m &L, Trish, you had them too. They're just amazing. Like mm -hmm. I aim to do it every week just for maintenance. Like um, they're just the whole postnatal package. So it's postnatal plus 30 minutes of lactation. Yeah. And it's just heaven. I yeah. mean, if any moms are listening, if you're breastfeeding, if you've just given birth, even if you're not breastfeeding, you, you still need a postnatal massage. But if you are breastfeeding, it's so good, like I said, for maintenance. Like you don't want to wait till you get mastitis. You don't want to wait till you get a clogged duck. Just do it every week so that, you know, everything's flowing. And I mean, massage m &L, this is your talk. So, so happy. And I'm going to keep on doing it. I know. I would come in and do 
my, because my problem with my milk was getting stuck in my back area and I didn't even know that it happened. They turn you on the side and they kind of push up, push it up and out in the sides and and then basically what it does is it just kind of unclogs all of your milk ducts and just lets you kind of flow that little bit better. And I think that's why this time around I was able to breastfeed for that few months more and pump as well because I was more on top of my wow. lactating massages the breastfeeding self-care but yeah. really it, it helps so much so that that has to be said because there are tools that you know can help you know whether you're taking supplements whether mm -hmm. you're drinking you know malungai soup yeah. or tea like yeah. nutrish you know i was having a lot of i still am having a lot of malungai soup but the massages that's something in your toolbox that moms you need to you need to use yeah agree yeah, it's not just for your neck, but it's also, you know, you need a break from everything else. And the massage is the a best. really good way to have some me time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's true. Um, they're not always, they're not always um, comfortable. I had a couple where, you know, they're really kind of squeezing your boob and then they're squeezing your nipple and it's just like, oh my gosh. But the good thing with Massage m &L is that you know that they, and I would always do mine at 8 or 9 p.m because they finish at around about 11-ish, if I remember correctly. So they'd always come when everyone's asleep. I would set up my little massage. That's area. when I do it, when everyone's asleep. <laughs> and then I'll just able, be able to, like, you know, roll over and kind of go to sleep afterwards. And and sometimes they're pleasurable and sometimes they weren't. But, again, it's really just maintenance and those extra things that you can do as a mom um, to kind of keep that flow going. So, yes, thank you, Janine, for always taking care of us. <laughs> I love it. So let's talk about discipline. How did how do you guys discipline your kids and how is it different from you were raised? I actually kind of discipline my child the same. But as again, like what I said earlier, is that I don't do it, you know, with an iron fist. I kind of do it now with more words. It's more getting myself onto the same level. With Arabella, what works really well is for me to actually be at eye level with her so she doesn't feel so threatened by me standing over her because it's not going to get anywhere. And look, I know that Patty and I keep talking about respectful parenting and, and you know, talking with them and having negotiations and using words and all these techniques, but, you know, sometimes I will lose it, you know, but I definitely don't lose it as much as what I used to. And when I do lose it. We have a tip for that. <laughs> you apologize. Yep. Own up to what it is. And this is something that my parents never did. You know, it was always the parents were always right. But now it's not the case. You know, so when it comes to um, disciplining Arabella, I will own up to when I'm in the wrong as well. So that when she's in the wrong, she knows to say, Mama, it was me. I'm sorry. Sorry, Wait. I was having a hard time. Yeah, exactly. And then if I'm frustrated and I'm having a hard time, I'll just kind of be like, okay, just give me a moment. Let Mama breathe because I'm quite frustrated at the moment. And just, you know, so it's really just disciplining. I speak to her how I would want to be spoken to. That's what I really try to do. So... Yeah, and again, I'm sure that there are mothers out there who are just like, I don't have time. I need to tell my child. If I see my child jumping on the couch, I need to say, get down off the couch now. But if you just look at the child and you say, I see you there. Is that a good idea, jumping on the couch? I don't want you to hurt yourself. It takes just as much time to say that. And it actually is less stressful for me to say it that way and then she can actually hear what I'm saying I'm not barking orders at her I'm actually making her think because she'll be like oh um, is this a good idea maybe it's not a good idea and you explain to them afterwards I just didn't want you to jump on the couch because baby I don't want you to hurt yourself you know reasoning with them making them understand by using words instead of you know barking at them that's kind of, that's how I discipline yeah and if if you're always barking at them it's going to create distance and disconnect. So it's all about, you know, where their safe space, right? Yeah. So even yeah. if there's a big emotion, if there's a big tantrum, if there's something, you know, big going on, they have to know that they can still, you know, come, come to us and that, you know, 
every emotion has a beginning and an end. So remember, uh, Trish, did you go to the, I forgot if you went to the thing with respectful mom, I forget. Anyways, yeah. we both, we both follow her on Instagram mm -hmm. and um, she has a workshop called riding the waves of emotions. And you know, it, it's a wave. Some, some days are going to be hard or this, this is good. Yeah, this is good. This is bad. <laughs> the, you know, you know, some days are good and some days are bad. So, and emotions have a beginning and an end. So you have to ride that. This is what I was trying to say. Sorry. You have to ride the wave with them and, you know, you don't distract them because that's, that's manipulation. You're, you're trying to focus their attention to something else. So it's just, it's Listen just being with them. Feeling. Yeah. Holding space. Yeah. For them holding space for them. And, you know, even like, it sounds like I'm just echoing off what you say, but it's because, you know, me and Trish are very similar, but it's like, when we're having a hard time, of course, sometimes we're short, of course, sometimes we snap and we say, you know, I'm so sorry, mommy was having, um, you know, a big emotion, and I shouldn't have done that. Or if some something if I'm like, Neo, mommy needs 10 seconds, I need 10 seconds, I literally take 10 seconds, I'll go, and then literally I just need that 10 seconds and I will feel so much better. And I'm like, okay, I'm ready now. What, what was it you were asking me? Um, and then, you know, and so hopefully in the future, if he needs 10 seconds, I'll give him 10 seconds. And that's, has that's he, how he's going to react. Has he asked for 10 seconds before where he's like, mama, can you just give me 10 seconds? No, but he'll, he'll kind of say, and then I'm like, oh, what's, you know, and then you just, you just watch, you know, and yeah, exactly. inside I'm like, yeah, <laughs> but you know, it's just, and it's modeling too. Right. So w they're picking up on, on things like you can't really teach your kids manners. You know, it's better to just, you know, model it yourself. You know, mm -hmm. if you say, thank you, if you say, please, if you, um, you know, greet elders, you, you can't force kids to do these things. Um, and it's not genuine, you mm -hmm. know? So, and it's just the cutest thing now. Like this is an example for today. I, um, I finished water at the pool and then Neo wanted to play with my water bottle. So I, I, I just gave it to him. He said, mommy, can I have your water bottle? And I just gave it to him. He said, thank you for giving me your water bottle. <laughs> and I said, oh, you're welcome. You know, and that's just so genuine. I, I wasn't like, say thank you, you know, because yeah. <laughs> what's that going to do? So modeling is another, another thing that I, I say, I think we practice. Because then they just say it as opposed to feeling it. Yeah. Different. Yeah, exactly. Saying something to get something as opposed to saying something to meaning it is, yeah, different. Um, were, were there any myths or traditions that you guys do as parents or your parents did when you were growing up? Because here in the Philippines, it, it's, um, I think most parents have all of this um traditions or myths that they believe did you guys practice any of those or did your parents did any i know i know what you mean because there's some things i'm like what are they doing and, I'm like, and my mom will be like oh we used to do that or oh that's what my mom did but i'm i'm trying to think of something um jed had a lot of hiccups like i feel like his first few weeks i don't know if this really worked guys but they would put like a little cotton like a little cotton bud on. Did did you do this too, Trish? And my grandfather was, and I, did it. I did try to go. My grandfather oh, used to do it to the kids. I yeah. mean, I've never heard of that. We never did that you with Neo. And then, if I've got the hiccups or whatever, you put it there. So they're like. Oh my gosh. And I, I was just like, okay, guy. I mean, and it would stop and they'd be like, see, it worked. Yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I mean, that's something I just I just thought of of the top of my head. But I know that there's kind of some, you know, quirky Filipino myths and traditions. I just can't think of them right now. Yeah, because yeah, no, here in the Philippines, there's so many things that they believe in. It's funny. Sorry, I Tisha, you were saying. I definitely know um, that our nanny to sometimes get Arabella into bed will say, oh, there's a ghost that lives. And she says it in Tagalog. So my my Arabella's nannies talk to her in straight Tagalog and she'll answer in English so she can understand. So sometimes I'll say to her, what, what are you saying? What's that word? Um, and she'll be able to tell me what it is in English. So sometimes, especially when the, the nannies are off and she's like, mama, come into my room. There's so and something in the curtain. And I'll say to her, what are you talking about? And 
I've had to speak to the nannies and they say, oh, it's like we say that there's a ghost there or whatever, so she doesn't get out of the bed. And I'm like, do not say that to her. <laughs> so You're like, now, that's something I don't want her to pick up, okay? I don't want her to pick up. Um, but my dad used to say things like that, like, oh, there's a monster under your bed. Don't put your feet out underneath the bed. Like, just things like that. But he would say it in a funny way. I mean, with six kids, you got to try to keep those kids in bed any way you can. And, um, and yeah, like all those things, you know. Um, so we've had to actually say to her, there are no ghosts in the house. If it's a ghost, it's probably Marshall from Paw Patrol with his blankie on top of his head walking <laughs> <laughs> that's what we've said to her. So, but yeah, so there's a lot of Filipino, you know, urban myths, I would say, or wives' tale that we kind of try and stamp out. Because I remember when I was in Australia with Arabella for three months over Christmas, every time she would see any kind of black thing on the floor, which resembled a cockroach, she'd go, ah, Epi's, Epi's going to bite my bum bum mama. And I'm like, huh? who's telling you who's saying all of this stuff so I've had to say to the girls as well say to the nannies please don't have big reactions to things because I don't want her to be like ah hippies ah flies ah spiders I just want her to be like oh it's a cockroach okay Neo runs yeah. to them I'm like oh no yeah, <laughs> but that's a, that's another thing for me I'm like I'm not trying to project my fear of cockroaches onto him so that's another mindful thing that I'm trying to do. I'm here like, yeah, it's a cockroach, <laughs> you know, but yeah. if, if he's not scared and he's, yeah, I think he calls it Epis too, um, <laughs> or cockroach. He does both. But anyways, I mean, ugh, anyways, that's, that's his thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it's because of, it's the culture differences, you know, because your dad's English and then your mom's Filipino. So you kind of, we're kind of raised, you know, Half and half, you know, same yeah, and it's kind of nice because we can we can pick and choose what we like from each side, what yeah, works, definitely. make our own little cocktail. Yeah. <laughs> Parenting really evolved through the years, but of course, we are somehow influenced by our parents or people around us. So today was a very insightful discussion, and I bet you guys learned a lot, like I did. Okay, I think it's time for our third question for the giveaway. Okay, question number three. What brand is most useful of this pandemic? It's one of our sponsors for today. And comment your answers here and we will announce the winners in a bit. So, um, Trisha and Patty, do you guys have anything to promote? Social media videos, businesses, or projects? Pardon? Uh, do you guys have anything to promote? Social media pages, businesses, or other projects? I mean, the only thing, I have my own business, Skin by Shalula, which is a all natural skincare product. We started out with coffee body scrubs and now we do face oils, face masks and things like that. And, all, and that was just born out of the love of self-care, you know, with natural products and things like that. So if you guys are looking for a good local brand that is, it does what it says, it's no fuss, it's no frills, um, please go to at skinbachelula.com and, um, and try out our products. It's, it's my little baby. It was actually just, yeah. How about you, Patty? You guys can just follow along my Instagram page. It's at Patty Grand. So you can just kind of see there just daily life, mom, parenting, work. You guys can follow along if you're curious. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today, girls. See you again soon. Bye. Thanks for Bye. having Thanks. us. Bye. Bye, Trish. Bye, Bye Sky. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Okay. So that was a very, very insightful episode for MNL Talks. And while our team is going through the answers for our giveaway winners, let's read some comments. Yes. Yeah. I think now people are commenting their answers for our third question. But earlier today, I saw some of the answers are... Okay, let me just check that. Okay, sabi ni Sheila, very super informative. And sabi ni Chris, Puol, Aurelia, thank you so much. There are so many comments, so I can't really read that I'm all right now. But so nice to watch this live from sabi Chris. And C 
seeing my uh, seeing all the right answers for question number three. Good job, guys. And of course, sabi ni Sheila Marie, it's my fourth time. Super enjoy pa din. Hashtag MNL Talk. Sabi ni Trixie Reynoso Maliga. Thank you. Okay, do we have our winners? Okay, so yeah, while our team is waiting for the right names. <laughs> okay, sabi ni Christine May Tai Popon. Thank you, Massage MNL. For this event, I really learned a lot. Super nice to enjoy. Sabi ni Christine. Yeah, sabi ni Chrysler Brent de la Cuesta. Thank you for this. MNL Talks. I really love this episode. Okay, I love it. There are so many things that I learned from today's episode, actually, especially the uh, respectful parenting part. Because as um, I think it's also in Filipino parenting. We are so much in the Especially if uh, our kids are older, and because uh, we did that when we were younger, or we did that when we were younger. So I think that was very. Um, interesting for me because I also want want to practice respectful parenting for my kids because it's also a good way for them to learn how to respect other people. So very, ano yun, very, very magandang tip yun from Patty and from Trisha. Sabi ni Crystaler Brent de la Cuesta, I will share this to my fellow moms. Sabi ni hashtag MNL Talks. Super stunning learnings this episode. Thank you po. Sabi ni Pressy Erta and of course, Hoping to win then. Ayan. Okay. Let's see. Do we have the winners? Yeah. So, yeah. But I, I think super hira maging mom din, especially in the pandemic. Tapos, we have a newborn. It's very kapang daughter. Uh, super moms talaga. The power guests for the days so, like Patricia and Patty. Sobrang hira na na to give birth during the pandemic. Mas meron kapang. Toddler, I can't imagine. I have a toddler, I have a two year old, so I can't imagine a meron kang toddler na patakot ako everywhere. It's meron ka pang newborn that you have to take care of. Kung super moms talaga yan. Sabi ni Sheila Mary, super neat talaga itong parenting, lalo na si new moms. Thank you, Mami Sky and Masacha na. Thank you, Sheila! And sabi ni Trixie, super relate sa mga topics and learned a lot sa parenting techniques. And ayun nga pala. Um, one parent, uh, one breastfeeding tip na we all stand by, kami ni Patty and Trisha, is yung uh, postnatal massages and yung lactation massage. Ako when I gave birth, I really had a hard time breastfeeding. So aside from everything malunggay, capsules, um, sabaw and all that, yung lactation massage really helped me para uh, magkaroon ng mas ayos kung nag-supply na mas steady na supply. I didn't really plan of breastfeeding that long, pero since maganda yung um, breast milk supply ko cause of yung mga supplements and food that I take, nakapag breastfeed ko na medyo mas matagal than, we, um, than I have planned. So, okay. Just wanted to thank again some of our um, sponsors for today. Of course, nurseryvent.com, Smart Steps, Laurel Coast, Miles, of X Chihuahua Cosmetics and Cradle. Please don't forget to follow our sponsors for tonight. And of course, please don't forget to follow at Owen in Manila and at Massage Channel for all the updates, especially for our next episodes. Okay. Okay, do we have a winner? So don't forget to follow them all in their social media um handles are flashed on your screen right now. Yeah. Super favorite ko yung cradle, especially when I was um, breastfeeding before. Because I had a wash for breastfeeding and, and yung um, bottle wash. Na lad. So that's very good as well. And of course, you can find all of those on nurserydan.com. Okay, I think our, our, our winners. I think our winners are ready. Come on, let's flash up the names on the screen. Our winners are Erika Santiago, Crystal Brent de la Cuesta, and Jen Puerto. Okay. Again, Erika Santiago, Crystal Brent de la Cuesta, and Jen Puerto. Congratulations, guys. You guys get um 
gift packs from nurseryvent.com. So that's Smart Steps, Laurel Co, Smiles Hub, X Chihuahua Cosmetics, and Freedel. Yay! So, hindi lang for the baby and for the whole family, especially Chihuahua Cosmetics. That's for you, mom. And of course, Covex is for the whole family. And yon super saya ko so you get everything that you need during the pandemic. So please check your messages as a representative from Massage Emanuel. We'll get in touch with you on how to claim your prizes. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in for tonight's Emanuel Talks. My name is Kai Gavin of WendyManuel.com, and we'll see you again next week. Bye.